Hello everyone. In continuous with the previous video, today we are going to see regarding the enteric nervous system. So in case of enteric nervous system, we have two different types. One is intrinsic nervous system and another one is extrinsic nervous system. So here in case of intrinsic nervous system, we had already uh, seen in the walls of GIT video that we have intrinsic nerve plexus that are Meissner's nerve plexus and Arbach's plexus and in case of extrinsic nervous system we are having our autonomic nervous system that is sympathetic and parasympathetic. So now let's see how these intrinsic and extrinsic have their exclusive action over the GI tract. So now this is the innermost layer none other than mucosa. And this mucosal layer, as already we had discussed that this has three lining. One is epithelial lining, then the next one is lamina propria and the third lining is muscularis mucosa. If you have any doubt, you just check out the link of the video, Walls of GID, then it will be very useful. So this mucosa forms the innermost layer of the GID and this mucosal cells will directly remain in contact with the contents of GID and promotes absorption. Then comes the second innermost layer that is submucosa. This submucosa is made of connective tissue and this submucosa is having the nerve plexus that is Meissner's nerve plexus and these nerve plexus have nerve cell bodies process of neuron cells and the receptors here. So this is the cell body, this is the receptor and this is the neuron processes. Then comes the third innermost layer that is muscularis layer and this muscularis la layer we have two different folds of muscle. One is circular muscle fold which is very thick. Circular muscle fold. And the second one is longitudinal muscle fold. So here in between the longitudinal muscle fold and the circular muscle fold we are having the myentric nerve plexus. This one is Meissner's or submucosal plexus. And this one, myentric nerve plexus or Arbox plexus. So now the outermost layer that is serous layer, serous or fibrous layer. So this Arbox nerve plexus and Meissner's plexus gets activated. So this Arbox plexus and Meissner's plexus gets activated through local the reflex also and it is also stimulated by autonomic nervous system that is sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. So let's see how local reflex is getting activated. So whenever food is entering into the GIT, so there will be receptors present in the walls of the intestine like uh, as we had already seen and these receptors were stretch and chemoreceptors. So whenever wall of GIT gets stretched because of the foot bolus, this nerve plexus will be activated or whenever the foot bolus is entering into the GIT just because of the chemical reaction, this chemoreceptors get activated and they will stimulate the Arbox and Meissner's nerve plexus. This is how local stimulation will be there. So Arbox plexus is mainly concerned with the motility of GIT and this motility is governed by two types of neurotransmitters. One is excitatory neurotransmitter present here. Those were acetylcholine substance P and serotonin and in case of inhibitory neurotransmitters they were VIP, neurotensin and encephalin. So these neurotransmitters help Arbox plexus or myentric nerve plexus to maintain the motility of GIT. This Meissner's nerve plexus is mainly concerned regarding the secretion of glands, then regarding the absorption, then it controls the blood flow of intestinal wall. So these are all the main actions of uh, local nerve plexus. So now let us discuss regarding the extrinsic nervous system that is sympathetic and parasympathetic. So here preganglionic nerve fibers arises from the lateral horn of the thoracic segment T5 and it extends up to L2. 
and the preganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers passes via the ganglions celiac one superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric as i mentioned the preganglionic fibers arises from t5 to l2 and it passes via the ganglion celiac one then superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric and from the post ganglionic fibers supplies the entire part of git celiac plexus is mainly concerned with the stomach and duodenum and superior mesenteric is mainly concerned with the small intestine portion and inferior mesenteric ganglionic fibers are mainly concerned with the large intestine this sympathetic stimulation we can mainly see during any fright or flight response so whenever there is any stress we can see the action of sympathetic nervous system and the actions of sympathetic nervous system over git where inhibits the secretions reduces the motor activity contraction of gi sphincters and vasoconstriction So this is all regarding the sympathetic activity of enteric nervous system. So now let's see regarding the parasympathetic activity. So the nerve supply from mouth to salivary gland both the preganglionic and postganglionic fibers are through the facial and glossopharyngeal nerve and now our concern is regarding the whole gi tract so here preganglionic fibers arise from the vagus and it supplies stomach duodenum small intestine and it supplies up to the upper large intestine upper part of large intestine through vagus nerve and here we are talking only regarding the preganglionic fibers and this lower part of git was supplied by s2 s3 and s4 segment that is pelvic nerves arising from these segments and here also there will be only preganglionic fibers so let's see how ganglion is formed here so these preganglionic fibers ends up into the air box nerve plexus and meissner's nerve plexus present in the wall of git and there it will get synapsed it will get synapsed and forms the post ganglionic nerve fibers here so in sympathetic we have separate ganglion uh, the such as celiac ganglion inferior mesenteric and superior mesenteric ganglion but in case of parasympathetic activity the ganglion will be formed only when the nerve fibers get synapsed with the local nerve plexus that is air uh, box nerve plexus and myentric nerve plexus and regarding the functions of parasympathetic activity is exactly opposite to sympathetic activity as we had seen already that the sympathetic activity is during the fright and flight response this parasympathetic activity is mainly during rest and it helps in digestion you can remember like this so this parasympathetic activity improves the digestion through increasing the motility of git and increasing the secretions and absorptions so which helps in the digestion process very easily so now let's have a quick recap so we are talking regarding the enteric nervous system and in case of enteric nervous system we are having both the intrinsic nerve supply and extrinsic nerve supply and this intrinsic is also called as local response and this uh, intrinsic supply we are having meissner's and arbach's plexus and in case of extrinsic we are having our autonomic nervous system that is both the sympathetic and parasympathetic activity we first is the innermost layer that is mucosal layer then comes the submucosal layer where we can see uh, meissner's are submucosal nerve plexus then comes our muscularis layer that is the third one and here we can see the circular muscle fold which is very thick and the longitudinal muscle fold which is very thin and in between these muscle folds we are having the myentric nerve plexus or arbax nerve plexus and the outermost layer is serous or fibrous layer so now let's see how this arbax and meissner's plexus get stimulated it is when the food is entering into the git there will be stretch reflexes and the chemoreceptors present over the walls of git that will be sensing and passing the information to the arbax and meissner's plexus and this arbax plexus is mainly concerned with the motility of git and in case of uh, arbax plexus we are having both the excitatory neurotransmitter and inhibitory neurotransmitter the excitatory were acetylcholine substance v and serotonin and in case of inhibitory neurotransmitter it is having vip neurotensin and encephalin and in case of meissner's nerve plexus uh, it will be more concerned regarding the secretion absorption and blood flow to the gi tract so now regarding the extrinsic nervous system that is both the sympathetic and parasympathetic activity
So in case of sympathetic activity, the preganglionic fibers arise from T5 to L2. You can see here, these are all the preganglionic fibers and it uh, synapses in the ganglia. There are three ganglia, one is iliac, then is superior mesenteric, then inferior mesenteric. And from there, the postganglionic fibers arise and it will supply the whole GI tract as you can see here. And let's see regarding the action of sympathetic uh, trunk. And this sympathetic activity is mainly during the fright and flight response. That is mainly during whenever there is any stress. So there will be decrease in secretion, decrease in motor activity and there will be contraction of GI sphincters and vasoconstriction. So now regarding the parasympathetic activity. So here from mouth through salivary gland, both the preganglionic and postganglionic fibers arise through facial and glossopharyngeal nerve. And from the stomach to the upper uh, part of large intestine, it is supplied by the vagus nerve and mainly the fibers are preganglionic in nature. And this lower part of large intestine is supplied by S2, S3 and S4 that is pelvic nerve. And here the postganglionic fibers arise after synapsing in the local nerve plexus that is Arbax plexus and Meissner's plexus. So here let's see regarding the activity of parasympathetic nervous system. Here mainly it helps in rest and digest. So by for digestion it will increase the motility and it will increase the secretions. And so this is all regarding the entric nervous system. So if you have any suggestion regarding the topics to be discussed, just comment below. And thank you so much and happy learning.